Chris wow. Weidman's path to glory and Mo Diddy, Mo Problems, live and in <laughs> public, if you will, on this week's episode of The Shoes Fit, a show where you solve salacious situations by stepping the shoes, the shaken, the chagrined, the kerfuffed. I'm your host, Lexi, old author, seven secret sources, inspiration, a snappy guy for career procrastinators, and joining me, guest, Eugene S. Robinson, he who is the author of the memoir, A Walk Across Dirty Water and Straight in a Murderer's Row. Collectively, the Pancholis. Pancholi, 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 Pancholi. For our new Patreon perks, a new post in store, join our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash if the shoes fit. Now let's get the seven, Eugene. Sir. Some shoes are diddy. Oh, man. A week after the feds raided your homes, you're living your life in Miami. But is a smile on your face only there trying to fool the public live and in public, if you will? Yeah, look, you know, in the case of the, the grifter Carlos Watson, um, as many of you know, at a certain point, FBI started contacting friends of mine wanting to know if I wanted to talk to the FBI. And I said, sure, send them by. In the interest of justice, I am compelled to tell the truth. And uh, I have to say, I had, had, had my friends send them by the Sorrell Academy where I was training. I have to say, when they walked in there, and now keep in mind, I'm just a... I, I, I Small town bird lawyer. Free. Yeah, I'm just I'm just a guy. They weren't looking for me. They just wanted some information to which I was tangentially connected. They came walking in, and I have to say, for the first 10 seconds of these cats walking through the door, I got a little clenched, you know, just mm. a little bit. So you can imagine. I don't care how much money you have. You can uh, Look, when I was 19 doing an interview, my roommate, came over to the place where I was doing an interview for some music thing. He's like, can I talk to you for a minute? I was like, yeah, what are you freaking out for? I'm busy here. He's like, the police just surrounded our trailer with guns drawn. What did you do? This is a moment where you clench up, right? So I don't care what he's doing, what he's acting like. You had the feds in your house. They searched through all your stuff and they seized a goodly amount of it. Um, now, if you are, you know, you're as guilty of what they can prove you're guilty of, if you got an out, if you can, if you got deep enough pockets to get out of this, God love you. Maybe, uh, whatever, you got nothing like Al Capone says in, in The Untouchables. You got nothing, nothing. Okay, nothing to worry about. Nothing at all to worry about, right? None of those videos that 50 has put a bounty out for none of those videos have anything on them that could hurt you legally, financially, professionally. Well, let's forget about professionally because that's done. Yeah. Um, no, no, dude is, is gripping. But, you know, a, a lot of this stuff, the mistake that they make and that say Carlos Watson might have made is that he, he, the game of chicken is already was already lost. So there's no, you, you, very few people can pull a Trump thing and like, you know, stare down the system and go, go ahead, do your worst. Cause I got deep enough pockets where I could just ride this into appellate, you know, appellate court and just, you know, everybody loses interest after too long, you know? Um, this is serious business. And if you got R. Kelly, it didn't take too long. It didn't take too long for a quote to come up from R. Kelly where he, he's like, Yo, they're not fucking around. This is from R. Kelly, who is in prison. So I, I hope you are. I hope you are. Uh, if you want to live outside the law, you must be honest, says Bob Dylan. I hope that at the very least you got that going on. And I don't think you do. I'm just this is that's a flyer. It's a Hail Mary. But no, dude is is got to be is got to be gripping in the most significant, significantly crucial ways. I, I can't imagine he's not because, listen, it's not just what was on the videotape or the DVDs or your home server that you might have been streaming. It's not just that. It's, you know, what else did they find? Because mm. once they come in, it's not like, oh, 
I'm going to ignore that pound of Coke. No, they're not going to ignore that. <laughs> they, they don't ignore that. It's like, we came here looking for porn. We're going to find porn. Uh, oh, guns without serial numbers on them. You don't know. And then if you're Trump, you go, all that stuff was planted. It's collusion. It's a witch hunt. They're after me. Yeah, well, you can say that about two or three things. But at a certain point, they even got Epstein. The, the, the excuses run thin. So I, I would say if he's taking it seriously, and I know he is, that the, that's a game face for the cameras and nothing else. And whiling out Stevie J, too. Hey, uh, you know, uh, you're just trying to take a black man down. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I've known him for 29 years. I know him better than anybody. i never seen anything. They say sex trafficking. I didn't see no underground tunnels or nowhere. It's like, you know what, man? It's not funny. And, yeah, uh, and then yeah. also trying to put down the uh, civil suit. And they said on TMZ, he's like, yes, we understand the civil suit. However, in order for the feds to have been on your property, they had mm -hmm. to convince a judge um, mm -hmm. about the likelihood that there's something else going on on a federal level yeah. with crimes and sex trafficking, not this lawsuit that had doctored photographs. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, want to also, fight also, <laughs> also, 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 yeah. Also, I mean, listen to you. People go, oh, this is crazy. I mean, this is like people who say that professional sports can't be fixed. It's that same category of moron who thinks, oh, sure. Oh, you're going to, how many guys are on a football team? We're going to fix all those guys. How do you don't have to fix all those guys? You just fix one or two. Yeah. And this is the same, this is the same sort of deal. Sex traffic. Oh, you should say, you, do you actually have you, do you know what sex trafficking is? Okay, because what it is, is uh, a woman who is paid for uh, sex acts, in this instance, if she's under 18, you're a sex trafficker, my friend. And if she's come to more than one of your parties, though volition may have, may have been in the picture, and she got home, got dressed, lied to her parents, then came to a party at your house two times in a row, and you paid her to do so, you, you're fucked. You know what kidnapping is? See what kidnapping is. You get into an argument with your old lady and you stand in front of the door. She's kidnapped. You've blocked exit. You know, she's now a prisoner. So you, uh, you man, this is, this is, this is not a joke. Look, who, Suge Knight is now commenting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he said, I got some, the, he said, uh, I got advice I have is, um, you have to make a decision as to when you come to prison, whether you're going to urinate squatting standing up i suggest you stand another thing is you might want to reconsider the name uh, brother love because that kind of <laughs> alias isn't going to fly well in prison have a good well, night the whole <laughs> <laughs> he literally did the that whole... it was hilarious <laughs> well but listen 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 let's not get crazy about the standing up versus sitting down thing because a lot of times as a point of of uh, in prison as a point of decency if you have the top bunk and your celly's got the lower bunk you don't just stand up to piss and see the guy gets a backsplash. It's just a nice thing to do to mm. sit down and the guy doesn't have to deal with it. It has nothing to do with the, the, the supremacy and this kind of weird feminization thing that happens with tough guys. That's just a point of, of order. So, Well, there you go. The other thing, too, mm. is in the wake of the lawsuit, which is not dropped, but has been threatened against Diddy's son, mm. which seems yeah. to be part of the same MO, which is drugging and raping. And the thing I think is wild about that in terms of how they might try to leverage that mm. is, even though it's a separate thing, uh, not the feds bringing it, is when you just think about the M.O., right? I mean, you have Rick Ross talking about doing it, and then you have Diddy allegedly doing it, and then the son is just... It, 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 but also, but also let's, let's talk terms here, right? I invite a 17-year-old girl over to my house, and uh, I say, hey you want to do some blow? And she goes, Yeah, sure. So we do some blow. And then we have sexual contact. I've drugged and raped her. Yep. Where'd the coke come from? Well, I, I bought it. So oh, let me get this straight. So you bought the coke that you then gave to a 17 year old yep. girl who you then had sex with. So you drugged and raped her. Well, if you put it that way, no, 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 no. That's the law. I didn't put it anyway. So, I mean, I, I don't know the ramification. I don't know if there's a plaintiff in the case with his son other than the state of or the people of. But, um, yo, I, I, 
Chuck D said it best, the bigger the black, the bigger they want a piece of that booty. You had to know this stuff was coming. I'm just shocked it took as long as it did. You know? Well, what about the Epstein um, theory? You hear about the black Epstein theory, the fact that his whole MO was he had these parties, cameraed up every room, and has blackmail footage of people. And one guy actually said it's sad. It was a Facebook video he put up years ago, then it was taken down. He was talking about what would happen is um, you would wake up and your butt would be hurting and you're in a bed oh. and you're like, well, what's going on here? What happened? You don't know. And then you have your contract negotiation that day and mm -hmm. you go in and give you the contract and you say, yeah, I'm not signing this. So you're not signing what? I'm not signing this contract. Okay. Put the tape in and they show the mm -hmm. tape of a guy having his way with you. You're like, if you don't sign the contract, that tape is going out to the streets. And now at the end of the day, the guy was drugged. He was raped. Right. Like mm -hmm. no consent whatsoever, but his credibility would be ruined in his words, in his view, if there was a tape of him being raped by a dude. And so yeah. he signed the yeah. contract yeah. and he said, this is what the yeah. MO is. And people like it, it, it's so if you talk about, you know, situations where um, not just inducing people to sign contracts that way, but having these extravagant parties for decades. Oh, it's safe to party at the white party. It's safe to go to these house. It's safe to, and it's cameraed up. So I mean- listen, Well, listen, listen, if you go to, if you go to a nice house, like you, there's a story I told on uh, the show Stomper, which is a stunningly horrifying story about a British guy. I'll give you the reader's judges where his wife is cheating him like crazy. She, he finally has it confirmed that she slept with all of his friends and his business is a horrible thing, British, British guy. So he says separates. And then after that, he's got to get out there and he's dating again. He's very cautious. He's going on Bumble or all these, these dating sites and he doesn't bring anybody home. If he gets lucky, he goes to their house, he go to a hotel. Um, but finally, there's one woman that he's been seeing a couple of times and he's felt comfortable with her had her come to his house, which is a palatial manse. Uh, and uh, they have contact, you know, sexual contact. They're having a great, it's not the first time they've had sexual contact. She gets up and goes into the bathroom. And he's like, she's been here a long time. He's a babe, you okay? And she opens the door and she comes out. She's fully dressed now. Like they were having sex and spilled some champagne. And she goes, oh, let me go clean, clean up. And he goes in the bathroom, comes out. She's fully dressed. She's I, I have to go. And he's like, what you gonna, I have to go. She leaves. 20 minutes later, cops show up at his house. She said she was raped. Well, the guy has a palatial manse, which means, he, one, I'm fully entitled to have cameras all over my house, right? He has cameras all over his house, all over his house for security reasons. And, uh, you know, I mean, it gets hard to say if you have cameras in the bathroom that your cameras are there for security reasons, but most people have nice houses, have these cameras in their houses. And they goes to court and he, she doesn't know he's had the camera and he's like look this is this is the the video um but there's audio dropout there's like 1.7 seconds of audio dropout her lawyer leaps on that and goes that's when he threatened her <laughs> so the dude is looking at seven years in prison at this point or a substantial cash payment of some sort and it's extremely fucked. you gotta know if you're going to parties at p diddy's house or any wealthy celebrity's house that you are being watched while you're there. Mm. Just not even, not even quite. And just because you're a dude, that's the thing. Dudes are so used to feeling dude that they don't even like, who's gonna rape me? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's yeah. gonna rape you. Like Sorrell once said to me after I had a glass of wine at his house, you know, we have a Brazilian saying, I go, what is it? A drunk man's asshole belongs to the world. I go, I have to go, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, what the fuck? I can't enjoy a glass of wine at my coach's house. I gotta go. So, I mean, um, whatever, well, whatever, you know, yeah. I don't know. You, you, excess of caution, no such thing when where, where your butthole is concerned. Mm. Speaking of buttholes and concerns, <laughs> brought up by Mr. Ms. Price, who's here. To hear the tale of one and only go lighter general eugene seven the shoes of chris weidman i pokes a plenty brought you back to the win column so why not just retire on top live and in public if you will well I, I, 
look, let's just call it foreshadowing because it's coming up. I, I make no surprise. He's made it into Misty AF again. I'll go into it in, de- in fuller detail in that segment. But I, I have to say, you don't know the forces that are at work on this good, this good upstanding woodcutting man. I mean, the guy's got a lot of heavy people who depend on him, very specifically his wife, who's gotten used to the finer things in life. So, um, you know, and like I, like I said, early, early uh, UFSI, I watched, and one of the guys who won clearly did not expect to win. It was probably the first time I was like, what a fucking raw guy, clearly aggressively robbed. Um, and I expressed to my coach at the time, I said, as a point of honor, were it to be me, I'd have to say, hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't, I look, judges, I love you, but that's wrong. I'm abdicating. I'm walking. I, I'm not, I will not accept this as a win on my record. And my coach looked, at the time looked at me and goes, you're a fucking idiot. Are you a professional judge? Okay, so you're not a professional judge. So you are going to do the job of a professional judge and say that you could see things that they didn't see just by virtue of the fact that they made, they saw things that you didn't see. It's their job. They made a decision. You got to roll with it. And I was like, uh, you know, that sounds like a guy who just wants a participation medal. I want to win. I want to see that guy lying on the canvas. That's what I want to see. Now, my theory with Weidman is that, you know, everybody comes back with ring rust. He's testing the, the, the new leg. He's a little you know, iffy. He was terrified that first round, just held the guy against the fence. There weren't even any major moves to put his hands together to join, to you know, to get him off of his feet, to complete the takedown. He was just holding on for dear life. And he's like, Okay, well, then let's assume that I won that first round. And he sort of starts to come alive. I just got to edge him a little bit on the second. I think he's terrified. He's terrified about relevancy. He's terrified about ability. He's terrified about aging and not have a, having a decent, respectable fucking plan B. So what he needed was exactly what he got from this, which is breathing room. Maybe they book him one more time in 2024. Until then, he's still an MMA fighter. He still gets cruise whatever benefit there is to him. I don't know pay-wise what that means and if it'll be enough to make the home piece happy. But, you know, I'm sure he's of the mind. Like, I don't give a fuck what you say. I won that fight. And God love you. Keep believing that. I mean, what other career options would there be? for him i don't know man but you got to think of think of think of think of the fact that he works out in a gym where or at least he's heard of or continues to see to a certain degree say al iaquinta Mm -hmm. who dumped the whole program to become a real estate guy al rolling into the gym in his suit and his tie with a little you know key in the the key fob and the little thing you know trying to sell houses but you need a house need a house um, or Stipe with a full-time job still. I mean, they're actually guys who still have feet in both worlds. Are there. Um, what's he going to do? What's he going to do that's commensurate with what he has done? And keep in mind, if you get one check for $100,000, that feels like the shit. But there's some people who work the entire year for $100,000. Mm-hmm. At the end of the year, they both have $100,000. Even if that one guy who got the $100,000 from fighting got it from one night, Realistically, this is, you know, you got to take that 100,000, build on top of that, make 200,000. You just can't, like Mr. Natural said, let your meat loaf. So uh, where does he go from here? The sensible thing would be to start a gym. But that's not going to work because unless he's going to move out of Mineola or wherever the hell Sarah Longo is, they're there. You know, Maddie Sarah has been retired for a long time, comfortably retired to running running a gym that apparently is doing pretty well and at least had a champion not too long ago in Aljamain Sterling. So what's he going to do? Um, I guess he could train people at the gym, much like the relationship that Cain Velasquez has with Javier Mendez at AKA. That's a that's a reasonable out. Will it be enough to bring in enough money to keep you know the home life happy? Don't know, but people have to adjust up or down as the case may be. Damn, damn. Let's be an adjustment. Let me just go back for a second with Diddy. Mm-hmm. One thing, we're talking about, you know, getting paid and certain lifestyles. So Mm -hmm. in wake of Diddy and the fact that he knows that there is a strong likelihood that he, his days as a free person are numbered, whether it's months or years or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like how, if you've lived the life that he's lived 
do you then like put it on? I mean, it's already been on life on steroids. Like, how do you live your life with this sort of Damocles hanging over you in terms of going to prison? Like, do you what, what do people normally do in the, those? I don't think I don't think he's going to prison. And, and let me let me tell you tell you why. Where, where all these others did. Um, I think he he. Cr this is just a gut feeling I have that he his most egregious crimes were against men mm -hmm. right um it, it just his, his most aggressive uh, uh abuses of power seem to be against men now there's that one celebrity who is uh or not celebrity but she's a woman of, of like you've heard her name who say and know oh, that he that he pushed her around yeah that's one that doesn't that's not like cosby where you got 60 plus accusers or or R. Kelly, we have multiple accusers, and the guy is like, blade, you know, blatantly cruising the local high schools looking for, right. you know, I mean, the the it seems to me the the, the most shocking portion, the vast majority of his crimes, uh, were against men who he drugged and then had sex with, right, um, or somehow you know wielded power over them in order to get them to do this. Um, and these guys are not going to, they're not fucking going to court to testify about this shit because that's a double whammy. So not only am I a snitch, but I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a catamite, I think is the word, you know, <laughs> engaged in homosexual activity. Now, nah, you know what, like the, the Dave Chappelle thing, I'm just going, I'm going to walk this one off. And, uh, and so I think that, uh, he's going to get dinged, but I suspect he still has enough money to pay everybody off his da the damage it for him is be reputational because nobody will be thinking about bad boy in the same way and parties at his house are pretty much a thing of his past i hope right. you had enough of them uh, i what level of celebrity do you have to be where you think going up to diddy's house now makes a lot of sense it could happen that he ends up like sal minio and his he, the numbers of celebrities uh, folks that hang out with him are like not you know a list b list he starts bringing in like Z list people, and then you got problems. You end up like Johnny Thunders or you know mm -hmm. Elliot Smith with a knife in the chest. They're like, who came over? I don't know. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to prison. I think he'll have to pay. Um, and you know, the reality of it is, the guys who might come to stand and, and and claim you know damages, try to get some money out of him for this, you know, they say, well. Um, you know, you get a judge like Persky in the, in the uh, uh, Brock Turner case, well, you were unconscious during this assault, right? Yeah. Did you went to a doctor afterward? Yeah. Did you sustain any rectal damage? No. <laughs> I mean, this is how people do men, <laughs> both literally and figuratively. So I'd be surprised if he goes to prison, but he's going to, what is that line from uh, uh, the LL Cool J song? I want to do this, Brutus, but I don't want to pay. Yeah. Diddy's paying. The thing is, paying and prison, I don't know. I, I, it feels to me like he's going to pay and pay and pay, but I don't think he's going to prison. Mm, man, that's right. The sleepover Usher and Justin Bieber. Yeah, but you know, the thing is about those sleepovers is the record labels were sending people his way too. So Yeah, there's a, the, there's uh, a lot. You know, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not there's like a, he's there. just, it's yeah. not like a, I mean, just piggybacking off your Cosby thing. It's not like a Cosby thing where here's this roaming rapist who is a solo actor and lives in the middle of nowhere and is, you know, luring people in with certain promises. This guy was a fixture of the circuit. He was a member of the industry. People were partaking in the things that he was doing, mm -hmm. knowing the kinds of activities he probably was engaging in, which during the time wasn't frowned upon like it is now. Yep. So, yep. you know, there's so many tentacles attached to it. Uh, so you don't yeah, think vo this, gonna... this is a friend of mine who's an out and out criminal. And he just explained it to me in, you know, he's not, he's not from, he's not a native born American. He's uh, came here from Greece. And he said to me, uh, he says something interesting to me because he had been accused of stealing a, a mutual friend's vehicle. And he said, listen, the moment that guy handed me his car keys, it became a civil case. Mm. You know, the guy is kind of like, uh, like what you, you know, uh, what you, a bunko artist, right? And he's figured this stuff out. 
the second you get, I didn't steal a thing. You gave me the keys. And at that point, it's a he said, he said argument, right? So I invite you over to my house. Whatever happened after that, if you come back a second time, Mm. it's a he said, he said thing, you know? And that's where a lot of these people are going to get screwed. Like you can't look this friend of mine, her name is Olivia and she's a porn star big, big back in the nineties. And she did a scene. Nobody could figure out why, cause she used to be a vivid girl. Somehow she got into a money crunch. She did a scene with Max Hardcore. Yeah, I don't, don't want to get into the porn jungle. You know, Max, he did these, you know, it was hard stuff. And uh, she's, it's called maxed out the series and she sued him because he drugged her for the scene. You watch the scene. And she told me, Eugene, don't watch it, don't watch it. I said, well, I'm a journalist, you know, and he had done, so, I interviewed him for a publication that we had. So I was like, do I kill the interview or not? I wanted you to see. So it's clear that she's drugged during the end. She's slurring her words and she's just out of, she's like, fuck you, Max, you're a piece of shit, Max. So she goes to court and um, sues him, gets him dragged, successfully gets him dragged into court. Um, and, uh, the judge says, did you work with Max again? And she said, yes. And they said, can we see the other video? And the other video is exactly like the first one, except she's not drugged. They threw out the fucking case. Nowadays, they wouldn't throw out the case. She, her attitude was like, did it make a difference? I did not consent to being drugged. I was drugged. It doesn't matter that I went back and did the job sober this was still a crime that was committed in the state of Florida. They just laughed her out of court and say that was it. So this is, you know, if Bieber or Usher, these guys are up there multiple times. Yeah, we get an Epstein situation, you know. Uh, the first time I was raped at Diddy house, Diddy's house, it was terrible. The second time I was raped at Diddy's house, it was really terrible. The third time, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I don't think you're coming for the parties at that point, mm. right? So, man. Who's Misty AF? Other than the thoughts of people believing Diddy's going to go to jail. I, I, it's Chris Weidman, man. I mean, Chris Weidman, because I, I keep in mind, uh, like I, I'm watching the fight. My wife had a poll show. I'm at the poll show and an intermission came at the right time. So I'm like watching the, the fight on, on my phone, sitting there watching it. And, and but then in, in the presser, that's when it, my mind solid, cold, hard solidification around this idea that, Dude is Misty AF, man. I could see. Look, in in, in the Show Stomper universe, I've got to give him at least until Wednesday. He can talk any kind of crazy thing he wants until Wednesday. So I should be holding my fire on him now. But I could see shining in his eyes was not cynical opportunism, but real belief, real belief that the, and you could see it in the way he was celebrating you could see it in his, his like was he looking for a way out oh that's a perfect trump maneuver it's, i didn't cheat he quit okay there's a point at which we played a show in 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 london and i kept knocking this guy out knocked him out once somebody dragged him off the guy regains consciousness comes back to the foot of the stage starts fucking with me again i knock him out a second time somebody takes him off Guy gets up conscious, comes back. And the third time I got the mic stand unscrewed from the base. I'm about to strike him with the mic. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. This is not on me. If there's anybody in this room that cares about this man, could you please rescue him? Because this is just going to go on all night. And I'm sure you didn't pay to see me thump on this prick. And so somebody finally comes up in like the James Brown cape routine. They usher the guy out. The guy's like, fuck him. I wouldn't have fucking, you know, blood dripping from it. I wouldn't fuck it. And they take him out of the club, right? Somebody needs to have that moment with Chris. You, did you see his eye? I'm glad I heard mama's eyes are fucked up. It's like, you're going to put us in a situation where bad things are going to happen to you because they're not going to give you another silver. They can't. Based on what you pay, they cannot. And if they, if if, they, if it's not a silver, you run a serious. And he cleverly tried to get in there, say, "Oh, I'm going to fight Anderson Silva. That's what we're going to have a trilogy." Anderson Silva's like, "What? <laughs> As you tell that fool I've been retired. I played my cards right. I got plenty of money. I don't need to do that to legitimize your fucking career, whatever." So uh, I think I think they're going to put him in a situation where he's fighting somebody. Excuse me, he's fighting somebody that 
he just is going to is going to do what guys are paid to do. I'm going to retire your ass now. And that's not going to feel good for him or anybody connected to him. So I'm thinking like if anybody cares about this man, maybe now is the time to say something. You know, like okay, I'm going to give him until Wednesday. He could talk a crazy stuff. The guy was grabbing my penis out there. The guy was, I don't, you say whatever crazy thing you want yeah, until Wednesday. But after Wednesday, you've had plenty of time to think, 72 hours to think about it. Your mind's pretty much made up to believe whatever you're telling us you're believing. But in this instance, I think, man, it's missed. It's wood. It's a lost battalion. And I just, it's nice knowing you, man. Man, in terms of a speed thing, you have anything you want to say about the, Endeavor going private while Oopsie and WWE slash TKO are still public. Yeah, that's on my show. On my show, uh, uh, the show stomper, I said, I want you to go outside your house, put your finger in your mouth and put it in the air because I'm telling you the bald one has got something up his fucking sleeve. He's got something up his sleeve and I don't know what it is you know, settling this case, you know, him doing this Mia Culpa tour. He's bringing up the thing with beating up the wife. He's just, Mm. he's trying to get ahead of something. Something is happening that's big and I don't know what it is. And I'm waiting for these shoes to drop. Was it this news? I thought it was suspicious that I had to find out the very last sentence. And this is Variety. I'm reading Variety now. I'm not reading MMA press. The very last sentence, they say, uh, TKO and WWE, would you TKO WWE and the UFC, by the way, are still public. It's Endeavor. Now I don't know about corporate structuring. It would be nice if John were here, but you're you're an attorney. You might know. Uh, how can the Umbrella Corporation go private and then the the, the, the subsidiaries remain public? So I can still buy uh, UFC stock. And then, which is, you know, you need is one or two shares to be able to stand up at a stockholders meeting and say some stuff, um, but I can't do it. I don't know how, in terms of governance, that protects Endeavor, but um, I still don't think, I think something's happening and I don't think we know what it is. And I'm, I think in the fullness of time in the rest of the year, I will, I'm prepared to not be surprised at all, but there's something, there's something rotten in Denmark. There's, there's, there's a reason he's doing what he's doing right now. It could be as simple, as crude as just hedging his bets in case Trump loses the election, which is highly likely, right? I mean, he's not been he's not been a win, not singing a winning tune since 2016. So, um, or is it just some other deck chairs on the Titanic? I don't know, but my spider sense is fucking tingling, and there's something going on. And I don't think it was what happened to uh, what was in the Variety today about. Uh, endeavor buying itself and buying itself back you're paying out 54 percent on on the original price and and going and going private again because they felt they were untreated fairly by nasdaq or not nasdaq but the stock standard of pores or or whatever you know the the stock market so you don't think it's conor mcgregor 50 million uh as the enterprise mentioned uh, amazon views business <laughs> I don't, I don't remember Connor is barreled, man. You know, um, I don't care how much money he makes for this movie. Honest to God, it's not because of him that we're seeing the movie, right? I mean, uh, you know, the average person, this is the thing he's getting all huffy at these award shows. The average person doesn't know who the fuck he is. Is, is is, It's not a Connor McGregor movie except to us. To the rest of the world is a Jake Gyllenhaal movie. They don't give a shit about Conor McGregor, you know. So um, that's that's a non-factor. And he's still, you know, he's still damaged goods, man. You can't walk too far. And he's not helping himself by the twitchy, coked up interviews yeah. he's doing. You, you notice since that last one, there haven't been any others. Yep. So who, whose decision was it? You think it was the publications? No, nah, publications love blood in the water, man. They love that. I'm sure they're asking. It's management, <laughs> you know, get him out of there. Sandman Sims comes out with the broom and Connor can go back to, to, to raping and assaulting people allegedly oh. in Dublin, you know, so. He wasn't at any of those Diddy parties, man. <laughs> well, you know, it's, I don't know, man. It's, 
it's weird. Like I, in the, in the sub stack that I wrote, I'm like, is it power and sex or is it sex and power? Or are these things indistinguishable to him? I mean, you do realize that all of what Diddy did that would constitute a crime at a certain level of fame, you could have done that stuff for free. <laughs> like I'm having a party at my, you don't have to pay hot women to come over. If you live in an 18 room mansion, you just don't. <laughs> Mm. You, you know so so uh it's like the the song by x you know johnny hit and run pauline this guy likes he just likes to know i gotta find get some people in here who tell me no and then dealing with that you know how much talking did he have to do to get rockwell to suck him off in the office Oof. i mean suck him off in the office in a way that he knew they would be interrupted <laughs> come on man i guarantee you if he was sucking off rockwell that door would have been locked Oh, I guess people didn't hear about that. Oops. <laughs> Somebody's watching me. Jeez. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> for our new Patreon perks in store, join our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the shoes fit. Follow us on Twitter, Agents Robinson, Alexi Old. Please give us a thumbs up, Eugene. Oh, let's, let's try this again. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> people who have never watched this show have no idea why i'm what, what's happening uh, okay well you know what it worked last week for john i don't know what's happening what about the enterprise i was saying would it get 50 million views without him um it's a good chance it's a good i mean what 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 you're saying is that he was a there's a causal connection between him being in the movie and the fifty million dollar um, getting a little higher probably. I mean there's there's value to him in there, terms of getting there are ten it guys he could have been replaced with there are ten guys he could have been replaced with in that movie. And you could say the same about Gyllenhaal. If you pull Gyllenhaal out and you put Tom Hardy in People are still seeing that movie. Mm, you put more you, likely you, to you, see you, it if they put Tom Hardy. Yeah, more, there. yeah. You take G Gyllenhaal out. You put H Tom Hardy in. You take uh, McNuggets out, and you put in uh, Nick Diaz, uh, Nate Diaz. Oh, got yourself a fucking exactly, bro. Come on, <laughs> it's like McNuggets. Anybody who, yeah, you got a McNuggets fanboy who was like, oh, this guy, and he does. He has that it quality. But that inequality has put him in strange places, and the guy is a liability. He's a liability. Why do you think the press junk the press junket is over? Well, they they I guess they could say in Hollywood terms, it's already made the money back. So boom, we're done. So you know, no need to pour good money after that, where people are seeing the movie with little inducement. The question is, will he in Hollywood? The question is always second acts, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, you think think about how phenomenal it is that. Um, like any star that's got, like I was listening to LL Cool J today and it's like, you know how many corpses he stepped over to get to where he is now? Where's Cool Mo D? Oh <laughs> man. He started rapping with guys who nobody like except serious hip hop heads even know. <laughs> like, you know, this is, he's like first wave hip hop and dude is still around. Who else can say that? You know, so this is, uh, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is the first wave of hip hop. How can Ice Cube, who sold platinum records and starred in films that made bank consistently, talk about the Illuminati and how he's not part of a... What's that about? I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Break that down for me, Eugene. I, I really do not understand how somebody who was part of the entertainment complex on a successful level for decades is railing about the Illuminati. I mean, does he think that his career will be bigger than it actually? I, 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 let, what, uh, these people, these fucking delude. Let, let me tell you something. The world is incredibly small. You know, the world is incredibly small. And in my own, there's a guy who I know who gets his his uh, MBA from Wharton? He he is a quant guy. Goes in the stock market, quant software, makes a huge shitload of money, right? And uh, <laughs> I have a play date. My youngest daughter is three and a half years old with one of her classmates, and I'm at this house, a fairly modest house. No, this is a big deal, you know, and. Uh, I look over on the mantelpiece and there's a picture of my quant guy on the mantelpiece. I go, Hey, how do you know 
and then I say the guy's name, how do you know him? And he's like, how do you know him? <laughs> it's like people who say professional sports, how are you going to fix all 30 guys on a football team? You don't have to fix 30 guys. What do you need for a conspiracy? You need two people that have a secret. That's it. So all of a sudden, now this guy who goes and gets his MBA from Warren, who makes all his money on quant software for, for his stock market, knows this the father of this guy, of, of this kid that my kid likes to play with. And the connecting tissue is me. Am I Illuminati? <laughs> you know, well, I don't have two nickels to rub together. So, <laughs> you know. Is there a broke you know, version? Have, yeah, <laughs> An ostracized know, version? Yeah, yeah what, what is it? Well, I'm a plaything of the rich. That's, that's <laughs> how I get to these places, right? So, you know, what is it? Bohemian Club in San Francisco. And I told a friend of mine who is general counsel, hot shit at like Amazon. And I was like, man, this VC guy keeps inviting me to these fucking parties. I'm not going. He goes, you dumbass. Next time he invites you, go to those fucking parties. I go, what? It's like, a, this is not a work offsite, man. This is work. Right. This is where you make, you have some drinks. You have some, and so I, I went to one of these things, one of these VC things. And these were like totally normal guys. And they, I, I was like, I was like a hit, you know, the, oh my God, you do jujitsu. Oh, da, 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 da. you know, and, and, but what's weird is, again, play thing of the rich. Everybody was amused as long as I was talking about the amusing shit. But then when I say, so what do you do? Right. And then they all shut down because it's clear that at that point I'm a striver because I care about what they do and I don't know. Right. So it's like, yeah, we're not giving hands our handouts here. So just say funny stuff and entertain us, but we're not giving you shit. Mm. I'd have to go to more parties for that. But this is this is oh, the Illuminati. Oh, come on. Stop that. It's everywhere. Trilateral Commission, Council for Foreign Relations. You just, like, you know, like these guys, they all hang out together. It's not a conspiracy. It just is what it is, you know? Man. Spinal Tap sequel. Oh, Lord. Yeah. But, you know, it's Reiner's got nothing else to do. These guys are all getting old. It could be actually very funny. I mean, sad to say we should dedicate this show to Joe Flaherty, who died uh, today. Mm. One of the funny, funniest men in the creation of the world. Uh, so I, I got to applaud their efforts to do it again. I mean, Michael McKean is still, still there. Yeah. I mean, Martin Short might be uh, Harry Shearer. It's going to be yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, more, yeah, yeah. You gotta, it'll, it'll be, you know. it'll be, I'm not worried about them ruining it. I'm happy to have it done. So. You know, it's so funny. I was just thinking about this other day, like, you know, when John was bemoaning, you know, all these remakes and the fact that, you know, the lack of originality, because especially for IP, they keep on dusting it off. And I thought about, it, I was like, well, wait a second, to a certain degree, like this Ghostbusters movie, right? And it's like, oh God, these guys again, it wasn't good. It's uh, yeah, limited yeah. audience. I was like, to a certain extent, it's almost like a reunion, right? In the sense yep. that yep. Yep. You yep. Go, when you go to reunions, you have low expectations. You just want to see how people are doing. And, yep. and you know, sometimes you have a good time because it's nice catching up with people and just, just be in the same space as them. Yep. And, yep. and, you know, is it is it as entertaining as the original? No. You know, is yep. it the the a better experience than uh, a party that isn't a reunion oriented one? No, but yep. you still get yep. some kind of enjoyment over. So I I see a lot of these properties as the 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 uh, the um, the uh, entertainment version of a of a film version of reunion. Anyway, well, people understand that too. I mean, how many times have you watched? The Godfather, a good fellow. Yep. <laughs> no, I mean I could probably quote these lines from the beginning to end. So you know, it's uh, if it's a, one of your most loved tales, hey, whatever, man. Yeah. I've seen both Point Breaks. <laughs> and you also yeah, like no. seeing people get a payday too, right? At the end of the yeah, day, it's like good I, for them. I don't intend. I don't intend to see Roadhouse because I don't want to put money in the rapist pockets. But uh, you know, mm. uh, anyway, Tony, uh, Tommy Toehold's uh, breakdown via Nick Diaz was probably all you need. It was the funniest thing in the world. And that's all you need to. That's all <laughs> the people need to know. Yeah, that's all the people like Baron Von Raschke might have said. That's all <laughs> the people need to know, you know. And uh, what do you trying on the block, Eugene? Uh, I got I got I got leaned on actually to write the liner notes for the next Juju record, which is kind of exciting. So I'm going to try to deliver that. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to de deliver that this week. Uh, I had the book signing at Kiss Kiss Tattoo in uh, uh, Venice Beach 
Um, How'd that contest uh, go? Remember you said someone's going to bid on... I, yeah, I said it. People had to bid on... But I, I screwed it up by not saying that I would not accept anything less than $1,000. So people just thought, oh, we're going to... We're going to bid. So the bid was $400 and you'll like this. That came from a guy who said, I will pay you $400, but I don't want to use my name. I said, no, we're not using Dick Hurts or Mike Hunt or Bend Over. Not none of those. He goes, no, no, no. It's a, it's a real name. I go, what's the name? He goes, Caitlin Chak 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 I was like, oh man, you know, he's clearly watching Showstopper and knows how much, how the beef I have against her. That's like asking me to print the do Anthony Keaties on my body. So, uh, <laughs> So, the, so somebody has leaned on me like, why don't you extend it to the Bungle tour and let people know where the basement is? And and he, of course, these are guys from jujitsu who are now thinking they're going to paramutualize it, all chipping their money to get Anthony Kiedis's name on me. So I'm not doing that. It's got to be your name. So then the the guy with the longest name who was like Costa Ruma Laka Laka Naka Naka, this like Greek guy with like 40 letters in his name, they're going to put up, give it a thousand and one dollars so I can get his name tattooed on me. It's like, whatever, man, it's your money. You know, I get to choose a typeface and a location. So it's not like it's going to be on my forehead. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be, you know, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's still, it's still going. I haven't, I haven't let the public know yet. Oh. So, there, so that was great. Uh, as luck would have it, Drew Carolyn showed up. And a lot of you maybe don't know, used to photograph, take photos for Halston uh back in the 70s and 80s then ended up doing the matinee photo book about cb's matinees and uh, you know went to southeast asia with matt dillon has photographed ll cool j did a whole all that those original photos of ll cool j back when he was on just on def jam he took and the guy's like man i'm picking you up at the airport we're gonna go do some photos it's like fucking hey i did an article on him back and the guy's been looking for a way to pay it forward so that was great. That was great. Uh, got cool, cool ass. Yeah, Oxbow is still touring with Bungle in uh, June, like June fourteenth to the June, the end of June, the July first or something. So, uh, um, but but anyway, so that's so that was great. It, lots of good stuff coming to that. We go to uh, Milwaukee uh, in May to play that Catterwall Festival. So if you live in or around Milwaukee and want to make the roadie, let me know. Anybody who listens to this show or the show stomp or reads the Substack. You can't DM me. I'll put you on the list. You get an all access list thing because I don't have super no, no high numbers of friends in Milwaukee. So there's room for you. So FYI, Stanley, you know, Mr. JB from the Show Stomper got into the last thing I did in Chicago. It works. So um, uh, ask ask away. But that's all I got going this week. Mm. Until next week, no matter how tight. Oh, yeah, sorry. Why with the bear from our rescue? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I still have his t-shirt around somewhere. Oh. Yeah. No matter how tight, loose, or uncomfortable, remember these words. On this show, the shoes always fit so we can never quit. <laughs>